Now I'm going to illustrate some best practices that I haven't quite followed with this series to date. Um, these best practices are designed to make the model more useful for your colleagues, more useful as a tech transfer document, more useful in general as a report on what we currently understand about this particular process. Just because we noticed in earlier sessions a few numbers that possibly should be different, I'm just going to permanently change the activation energy of the side reaction to 90 kilojoules per mole and that's a bit more typical for a difference between the main reaction and side reaction. I'm also going to impose just a solid 30 degrees reaction temperature because again we noticed that was better for this particular reaction. When we impose just two points, one at either end, the software will do a linear interpolation between the points and any other points in between. So that's how imposing profiles kind of works. I said already that overrides any other calculations that might be made of that particular response during the, the runs. So to the best practices, um, a casual reader of this model looking just at the process tab might not realize from the process tab that substrate is present in the solution phase. So a best practice I would usually apply is to make sure that all those components are listed in the solution phase. Um, so I just did a copy and paste to make that work. I would do something similar with the ethanol line so that ethanol is listed under the feed tank. Um, otherwise it might look like we're feeding neat reagent and we're not. On scenarios we indicate how much ethanol is present but it just makes the process tab more informative to list the ethanol there as well. And the final best practice is, in the absence of any other information for overall phase variables like temperature, for example, or pressure, Dynachem makes some default assumptions, like if no other temperature is provided, it assumes 20 degrees. If no other pressure is provided, it assumes one bar. If no other CP or heat capacity is provided, it assumes the properties of water. So I want to fix that because this is a model in which we do an energy balance. So I want the best possible CPs for my phases. So I'm going to just again use copy and paste to get a CP row here. I'm going to delete the comment. And now I need a CP value for the solution phase. Ideally that would come from an experimental measurement like in the RC1 or similar instrumentation. However, because the dominant material here is ethanol, it's probably quite a good assumption that the CP is dominated by ethanol's CP. So I'm going to use DC functions here to quickly retrieve the correct CP. I'm just going to type the name of the component, ethanol, choose the property, CP, choose the reaction temperature, 30 degrees C, accept the prompt, and now I have an accurate value for CP in the solution phase. I'm also going to copy that to the feed tank phase. I'm assuming similar properties in the feed to what we have in the main vessel. And then finally I'm going to retrieve a value for the heat transfer fluid which is Siltherm XLT. Again I'm going to take a value at 30 degrees C. The jacket is going to be operating around about 30 degrees C. So I'm going to insert, accept the prompt, it's 1.793. Other quick changes I might just make here to improve the clarity. I might just take away the one liter per minute uh, flow rate for the transfer, just because that's overridden on scenarios. And I will show you more of these best practices in the next video. I like to obviously leave the kinetic parameters on the process tab. Those are universal to any um, situation in which we might want to run this model. So I don't want to put those, for example, on scenarios. So now that we've made those changes, I just want to verify that they're going to stick. So take the model back into simulator again. And I'm also going to examine the model a little bit more closely using the list phases dialog.
again focusing on experiment one we can see we can rescale we can see the temperature of 30 degrees imposed we can uh, f6 or right click to run we can examine the jacket temperature it is at or around 30 degrees c we can examine the heat flow profile the qr profile that our rc1 or different kinds of easy max could measure and uh, we can see this is somewhat more kinetic than we've seen before so uh, more of the chemistry happening after the feed more accumulation that's because of the lower reaction temperature I'm also going to click on yield um, this isn't reaction optimization training but uh, the yield is higher when we run at 30 degrees C so that does show a good use of a model like this to find conditions that operate with acceptable yield. Now I just want to examine this model in the list phases dialog which we've done a few times before. This is the dialog that gives a numerical readout of all of the values that are being tracked and used by the model and um, we can see here at the solution phase all the components are listed this is at a particular moment 300 minutes we can scroll back to other times if we want to know what was happening at another time and uh, you'll notice here the CPs for the solution phase and the feed tank phase are defined as we expect and similarly the CP of the jacket fluid is defined as we expect.